I want to start with a great story. So I'm sure most of you have read Alice in Wonderland. Can I see by show of hands anybody who has not read Alice in Wonderland? Not read Alice in Wonderland. Okay, so I guess you can relate. Now, this book was written by Louise Carroll. And one of the most profound parts of the book is the exchange between Alice and the Cheshire Cat. Alice inquired of the cat which way to walk. And the response of the cat, and I want to quote, is that it depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I want to repeat that. That depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Now, Alice's response to this was, I don't care much so long as I get somewhere. To which the cat responded, then it doesn't matter which way you walk. This morning, my question to you is, where do you want to get to? With a law degree, you'll be acquiring in a few months or in a few years' time. Now, your answer to this question will determine the steps that you take and the sacrifices you should be prepared to make along the way in order to reach your desired destination. Hopefully, some of you here have a fair idea where you want to get to. And definitely will not be like Alice, who simply wanted to get somewhere. Your choices can also determine the type of lawyer you become or what you may end up doing after your degree or the law school. I recognize the fact that there are students who at the degree level or professional level have no idea about where they intend to get to or what they would like to do with their qualification. So I propose to address all who know where to get to and those who have no clue about what they would like to do. There are various options available to a holder of an LLP. And I will summarize them in five groups briefly. So the first category, these are those who want to pursue the academic path. So immediately after they obtain the LLP, they will continue their education. They may pursue postgraduates, and this is varied. So that will be an LLM, MA, MBA, MPhil, up to the PhD level. And then they begin a career in the academia. The second group of people, they dream and find money everywhere. They have entrepreneurial skills, instinct, sorry. And then they aim to identify opportunities, create value, do business, and make money. So these people are pursuing LLP, not because they want to practice law, but simply because they want to appreciate business issues better and be better guided in their business deals. The third group, these are those with LLB and they take up employment immediately after graduation. So just like any other discipline, once you graduate, you can take up employment. And there are potential areas for a holder of LLB. Management is one option, human resource another, administration, procurement, company secretarial practice, you can go into marketing, journalism, among others. Several options once you have the LMB degree. Now those of you who find yourselves in this category, you definitely need to attend some short courses. Either few days, few weeks, few months, and these courses are run by several universities, including the University of Ghana, we have GEMPA, UPSA, several of them. And the idea of these courses is to help you specialize in the areas that you intend to work in. The other group of people are those who opt to go to other jurisdictions. So after your LLB, you decide to go outside Ghana. You qualify as either a solicitor or a barrister, 
and then you return to Ghana to undertake a post call law course. Now, once you have completed with a post law course, you'll be enrolled as a lawyer in Ghana. But a word of caution here you have to ensure that the other jurisdictions that you study law in have similar systems with Ghana. You don't want to pay so much money, come back to Ghana only to be told that you cannot enter Ghana School of Law. The final group, which I'm sure is most of us here, are those who want to enter Ghana School of Law and qualify as lawyers. Definitely, you must pass the entrance examinations. You study for the qualified certificates in law, QCL for short, and then you'll be enrolled as a lawyer in Ghana. Now, after you have been enrolled as a lawyer in Ghana, you need to undergo the mandatory privilege. This is for six months. After that, you'll be issued with your practice license, and this will entitle you to practice as a lawyer in Ghana. There are so many stories about privilege, but bear in mind, privilege is not employment. I want to touch briefly on what makes a good lawyer. So you have settled on where you want to get to. But you must bear in mind that apart from your academic qualification, your soft skills are very important. And by soft skills, I mean communication, teamwork, adaptability, problem solving, leadership skills, work ethics, and time management. We are all aware that the number of lawyers being called to the bar each year is on the ascendancy. So this means that as lawyers, or potential lawyers, you must set yourself apart from all the other lawyers that have been called to the bar. How do you do this? You need to have other areas of interest. So don't be what we say, global. Look at other options. Foreign language, IT, we spoke spoken briefly about information technology this morning. Finance, anything else aside from law will be important to you one day when you start practicing. We've talked briefly about online courses. This is key. They are free ones, they are paid ones, whatever it is, take advantage of that. There are several courses that you can do there are courses on digital marketing, there are courses on intellectual property, courses on financial markets, negotiation, arbitration, project management, and even business development. So don't underestimate any other course that you can do because you don't know where your next client is coming from. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the misquoted phrase, Jack of all trades, master of none. Well, this phrase simply means if you dabble in everything, you are most likely not to grasp a lot of knowledge in the fields that you dabble in. But the correct phrase, and I want to quote that, is a Jack of all trades is the master of none. But oftentimes, better than a master of one. I want to take that again. A jack of all trades is a master of none. But oftentimes, better than a master of one. So I want to encourage you this afternoon. Take advantage of every opportunity you have to learn and improve yourself. In your early years of practice, you will have various opportunities to learn. Don't take it lightly. And I want to say it again, you don't know where your next fight is coming from. So every opportunity that comes to me, take it.